Welcome to Around BCC. I'm Keith Tebow. This month we're taking the show on the road. If you've watched the show at all, we spend a good portion of our time at our main campus in Fall River. So we thought this month we would, as I said, take the show on the road and visit one of the other new uh, campuses that BCC serves its students throughout its service area. Today we're going to spend a good portion of our time at the New Bedford campus, which is located right in the heart of downtown New Bedford. And we're going to start our conversation today with the Dean of the New Bedford campus, Teresa Romanovich. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you. Nice to have you here. Unbelievable that uh, this campus opened in the fall of 2001, coming up on its 10th year yes. later on this fall. Very exciting. Um, a lot has happened in those 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, talk a little bit, Terry, about how the, you know, the New Bedford campus has become part of the New Bedford community. When we started and opened our door in 2001, we had about 400 students. We had um, two degree programs and three certificate programs. We now have 1,735 students this semester and have 12 degree programs and 12 certificate programs where students can come here and take their entire degree programs. In addition to that, we've really expanded a lot in the way that we've connected with our community. We've kind of been not only, as you can tell by the numbers, not only the first response for students who are wanting to continue their education here, and now we're the educational leader for the community, but also we've done a lot with workforce development. We've linked with both the Workforce Investment Board, the Career Center, and also working with economic development to look at ways to really be the first response and the rapid response for workforce development. So when I came here in 2001, we actually had one grant for about $60,000. Now we have 12 grants for over $750,000, and many of those are workforce development grants. So we have a grant where we're doing programs for brownfields, and we're training people to go into the community and do some cleanup for brownfields. Cleanup, we're doing a reentry program where we have individuals that are reentering society and we're trying to provide them the necessary support services to be successful. We're doing training with our early childhood education partners and training their workforce. So I could go on and on and we're really doing a tremendous amount to sort of say what are the needs for our English as a second language learners. We have three grants that we're working with the local individuals whose language is not primarily English and are trying to get them to move into both workforce and just improve their language skills. So it's been amazing. Yeah. Ten years ago, uh, you came into this Star Store building, yes. sharing with UMass Dartmouth, yes. and um, pretty much from day one, it's been too small. And now with over 1,700 Correct. students, um, how, how have you been able to expand physically you know, some of the space here to, to meet students' needs? Great question. Um, what we've been doing is uh, what we call patching right now and looking at expanding into some other um, license agreements with some of our partner uh, uh, buildings across the street and up the street where we have added an additional six classrooms and two office spaces. And that's helped to accommodate some of the additional grant growth that we've had as well as classroom space. We're also really working very hard right now with a public-private partnership to look at an opportunity to increase our programming even, even further and to bring healthcare education into the community here in New Bedford for those individuals who want to come to the college here. So we're doing a lot of work. We've, got, uh, we've worked with our legislative delegation nonstop and have had the support of Senator Montigny and all of the local reps to put together a bond bill for $20 million for the college to actually have funding from the state to build a full campus here because the demand has been so mm. um, out, outstanding and unexpected. Mm. I think people thought that we were never going to grow as rapidly and serve as much. And I think the two pieces that were a little unexpected were the need for workforce development in addition to the college programming, but also the economic development that this college has been responsible for in downtown. We've seen lots of restaurants start up and lots of little um, entities that may not have been able to exist without the huge population that we bring right here to the downtown community. Well, well you know, we, we see it again. We don't come here too often. That's why know, we're here today. I know. We're often. here. We're we here to visit. I know. And, and, and we're going to spend a lot more time the rest of this program talking about the great things that are happening here great. at the New Bedford campus. So, Terry, thank you for joining me today. Thank we'll you be back. For Bristol Community College at New Bedford tries to provide students with opportunities that they would have at the Fall River campus and all of the BCC campuses. One of those opportunities is a co-op program where students 
work together with local companies to try to get that real-time experience in the business world. We're going to talk a little bit about the co-op program and how it works here in New Bedford. Joining me right now is Holly Fitzgerald, she's the co-op advisor, and Chris Wilbur, who's uh, one of the co-op students this semester. Thank you for taking the time to join us today. Holly, let me start with you. Um, the, the program here in New Bedford has been going on for some time, the co-op program. Uh, currently, how many students are, are normally involved, say, in a given semester? And uh, what type of opportunities to, do students have to, to provide a, uh, have a co-op experience? Well, we usually have about 10 to 14 or 15 students in the class. And it's really just such a wonderful opportunity because if they're around the 27 credits into their second year, they can go any, pretty much anywhere um, that I can place them with their major. If they're uh, in the health sciences, I find something in the hospitals, um, nursing homes. If they're in business, I try to find some small businesses. Sometimes Polymer Tech was one that was great. Um, uh, an art major, I've had some in art museums of whale was really good with an architect student. Uh, he had his own project. That's one great thing is they can have their own project if they're ready. Um, I had a student this last fall that was at the uh, mayor's office and he uh, wanted more. He's an entrepreneur student uh, uh, in business and he wanted more and uh, he worked with his supervisor over there, Catherine Rollins, and was able to have his own project scheduling a uh, New Bedford ferry over to Woods Hole and back for the people that work over there. Um, so that was very exciting mm -hmm. because they tried that once before and now this really actually happened. So, and the architecture student uh, has um, gone on to Bristol uh, College and he really was thrilled with working at Whale. Um, well, there are just so many different ones. Right. Now, have you seen that, that uh, more students here in New Bedford are at least inquiring about co-ops than maybe a few years ago? I, I mean, think it, it has um, slowly become more students. Mm. This one is probably the most students this term. Right. Chris, let's, let's talk to you. You're a second year student here at BCC. What's your major? Liberal Arts. Liberal Arts. Um, where, where is your co-op and um, how are you finding the experience thus far? Oh, uh, it's great. The co-op is here in BCC. Okay. And I'm working under the Dean, Terry Romanovich, <coughs> and we're working on grants. And I'm following, implementing, and being able to present at board meetings um, some of the things we found and researched. And um, we're going forward to, to try to obtain some of this, these grants. Now, what, um, is, what interests, or what, what are your plans maybe for after BCC? I mean, you're, you're doing some work here in terms of grant writing. Is that something you really want to pursue, or have you thought about what, what's next for you? Yeah, it's great. It sounds, it's, it's, a, it's a good avenue. I enjoy it much. And um, I hope to get into political science and move in that direction, and I think grant writing would be a great asset. And I thank Holly for, for getting me in there. One of the great things about, about, about BCC and, and its satellite campuses is there are opportunities for students like yourself, Chris, to take just about all of your courses in a degree here in New Bedford yeah. without needing to go to the full river campus. Yeah. That's been the case for you. Yeah. Um, if, if the New Bedford campus wasn't here, would, would it have been a little more tougher for you to, to get your college done, yep. degree done? Why? It takes about two hours um, full trip to take public transportation from here to the Fall River campus. So if you don't have a car, it's really hard to get there. And um, gas is expensive. And personally, my car is a bit older. So, so it's, it's a toll. Being able to take the courses here is very convenient. And um, I enjoy it. I can actually walk in the, in the nicer seasons. And the food around here is great. I don't know if, um, if that's known, but it's pretty right, famous yeah. food in the area. Yeah. Well, talk, yeah. a little, talk a little about the atmosphere of downtown New Bedford because, you know, it's yeah. a little, it's not like a big city, like yeah. a Boston or a New York, but it's got its own little flavor, doesn't it's quaint, it? It's though, yeah. It's, it's got New Bedford historic. It's a lot of history here, and um, you can feel it. It's not too big. It's not too small. Um, great architecture. Uh, it's, it's an enjoyable place to spend time, and especially in the warm weather when you can spend time between out, classes outside. It's very good. Holly, yeah. one final question yeah. for you. If, if students um, you know, may want to, to find out more information about co-op, they can just do that here at the, at the New Bedford campus as well. 
Um, and what type of information, just as basic information, do you, would you give them to start? Well, I would say when they're, uh, I mean, they can come in any time. I'm right across from the library in room 150. And uh, they can come in any time to talk about what they're thinking of. If their major, um, whatever their major is, it's very exciting to be able to actually do some hands-on work the way Chris is. Um, and you could just do what, you know, take it to the nth degree if you can, because you've gotten all these uh, academic classes that you're not going right. to incorporate into your work. So then you just need a 2.5 GPA mm -hmm. and 27 credits, and, and then you've got enough skills that I can place you. Well, Holly and Chris, thank you uh, for taking the time to join us today. Best of luck. Thanks for having thank me. Thank you. The great thing about the New Bedford campus is they are doing more than just educating students per se. They're also trying to solve some issues here in the local community. And they do that through a number of grants. One of the grants is called the Wise Women Project, which integrates women in the greater New Bedford area, getting them back to school and hopefully soon back into the workforce. We're going to talk a little bit about that right now and how it works here at the uh, New Bedford campus. Joining me right now is Susan Souza Mort who's the coordinator of the Wise Woman Grant Project, and also Laura Dill, who's one of the students here in the project. Thank you for taking the time to, to join me today. Susan, talk a little bit about the grant. What's the nuts and bolts of the grant? And uh, a little background about you know, how long it's been here in New Bedford and, and how many students it's, it's serving right now and maybe how, much, how many it's served in the past. Sure. Uh, this grant was originally started um, with my predecessor, Elizabeth Wiley. Uh, I believe in the year 2008. We are currently on our fifth cohort. Uh, we run cohorts because it seems the women spending more time going through all the classes together, they tend to have better student retention that way. Um, and basically what our grant is, is I go down to the Department of Transitional Assistance and we recruit women who are receiving benefits and just want, a help, just want help to get off of welfare, get into the workforce somehow. So we offer them for this cohort, 15 college credits on a op general office track. So they're receiving keyboarding, uh, Office 55, which is Microsoft Word, Publisher, Access, using the email, Outlook. Um, and then once they start taking the classes, there's also an internship component. So what we do is we match them with where they would like to go career-wise, and we get them into internships for 60 hours of interning. And then hopefully that would look great on a resume. It helps get them back into the workforce. And hopefully after that, we work with the Career Center and we try to find them employment. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of working with some of these women, um, do you often find, because uh, as you mentioned, there's an office cohort, I think is that how you called it. Um, do you find that, that a lot of women don't have like certain computer skills, or do you see some that have some computer skills, some that don't? So you've got a mix of, of what they already know coming in? You are correct. Some women will know how to navigate through Microsoft Word. Others will not. I think the bulk of them are still I mean, learning how to really manipulate access and Excel files, which a lot of businesses use Excel with the formulas right. and, the, and that sort of thing. Um, I've actually walked into that, class, that particular class, Office 55, myself and learned things that I thought I had known. So it's a really great class to really get them the skills that they're going to need to get into any kind of workforce. Now who teaches these, these courses? Uh, BCC, BCC faculty? faculty. And um, in terms of uh, how long it lasts, now we're in the middle of, of one of those, these cohorts now. Uh, it, it lasts a little bit longer than a normal semester. How long does it last? Yes. We will go beyond that just for job search phase. So after school, the semester ends the second week of May, we'll cont I'll continue meeting with this cohort to help them do some job search, update resumes, send out resumes, whatever they need to do. So right now I'm meeting with cohort four. Every Monday they come in for three hours to have one-on-one -on -one time with me as we sift through. I get like emails from BCC Career Center and from the New Bedford Career Center and we'll just try to match them up with jobs. Now how, how, ha how successful has this been thus far in terms of you know, the ultimate goal of, of training and then getting them into some sort of jobs? It must be kind of difficult with the economy the way it is, but tell us a little bit about how it's worked. It is. Um, Right from the get-out, though, with this cohort four, we actually had one girl right away find full-time employment with benefits. Mm -hmm. So that was wonderful. Um, but it is, in the past, they've had a little bit better, but I think as the 
economy goes on, we're seeing it's a little bit more difficult, but mm. you just gotta keep trying, and that's what we're going to do. So, keep yeah. our fingers crossed. Let's talk with Laura. Laura, you just started this current cohort, which started, I believe, in January. Um, how, did you, how did you find out about the program, and I guess what interests you about it? Um, I was just at the DTA office, and on the wall of her cubicle was a flyer about mm. Wise Women. And honestly, what interested me the most was the internship portion, because I was hoping that it would get me in the door um, to employment, because the poor job market is really hard to navigate on your own. And I thought it would be a good way into a good job. Now, have you been out of work for a long period of time or just recently? Um, since I've moved to New Bedford, I've actually been out of employment more than in employment mm. due to actually a fire at one location and then layoffs at another. And I just really want to be employed. <laughs> I want to take care of my kids. That's that's what it's all about. Talk, talk a little bit about the classes. How have you been... Um, taking the classes, I mean, is it, is it something, some of these skills, do you, did you already know some of these office skills or is it brand new to you? And, and how, how has the classes been, I guess, so far for you? The teachers are awesome. Um, they're all very personable and um, knowledgeable about their classes. And um, I knew keyboarding kind of because I took typing about 100 years ago, so it's similar. Um, but pretty much everything else is new to me mm. and it's, it's exciting. Mm. Susan, one final question. If, if someone who may be watching this in the Greater New Bedford area, and it's important to know that it's only for Greater New Bedford women, um, how can they find out more information? Can they, is there something on the college website? Can they just call the New Bedford campus? They can call the New Bedford campus. Um, my extension is 3327. And you can also find us on Facebook, like everybody else is on. Okay, so just do a search for the Wise Woman Bristol Project. Community College Wise Women. Susan and Laura, thank you uh, for taking the time to join us today. Thank You're you welcome. Us. We're going to continue our show with our New Bedford flair as we talk to a local alum in the latest edition of Alumni in Your Community. Hi, I'm Henry Bousquet, uh, graduate of BCC, class of 1998. Bedford, um, like the 80s, 90s type era, um, and you know, rode my bike everywhere and got to see the city, you know, from uh, from two wheels, so to speak. I've always enjoyed living here. It's uh, the place I think I always intended to make my home. I was uh, a student at Greater New Bedford Vogue Tech, and uh, I graduated there in 1994 as a, a culinary arts student. And I got to tell you, being part of that Vogue Tech family. Uh, has been extremely beneficial to me. It's, it's, it's helped me build some ties locally. Um, I also, you know, I got a, a lot of opportunities in the uh, workforce. Uh, once I graduated from there, uh, I went to work for uh, my, actually he was my culinary arts instructor. Uh, he taught all the theory classes and he was also a sous chef at a restaurant in Westport called uh, Kate Corey's at Bittersweet Farm. And uh, I had an excellent experience there uh, working with him and uh, a few of the other guys that worked with us uh, weren't, weren't as uh, into it, I think, as he was, uh, and they made me wonder, had I chosen the right path? And I think that that's how uh, I became interested in furthering my education, and uh, I chose Bristol Community College as, um, as the, sort of the, the leap into furthering my education. I worked my way into BCC, and uh, I really enjoyed my time there. I got involved in the community as a member of uh, the staff at The Observer, because uh, I was following a communications path at the time uh, and enjoyed actually the entire, my entire time at BCC as a, a, a full-fledged staff member. At one point I worked as like the assistant editor. Um, we were running stories and getting advertisement for the paper. It was really a, a fun and sort of family building opportunity for me. I met a lot of lifelong friends actually at Bristol Community College. Uh, when I graduated in 1998 from BCC, I went to uh, Bridgewater State College. It was my transfer college. Uh, and my first semester there, I found uh, a flyer saying that they were, uh, Walt well, Disney World college program would be coming to campus. So I went and sat in on the informational session. It was exciting and fun to listen to the guys from Disney. Joe Smith, the guy that interviewed, one of the, the major guys, the recruiters, uh, said to us, you know, well actually he said to me, Look, Henry, I like your application. Uh, what if I, because I had written, being a communications major, that I'd like to work uh, writing, you know, running one of the rides or doing something like that, uh, being part of the theater aspect of Disney. 
Uh, he said, what if I told you that you're definitely going to go to Walt Disney World if you can go as a cook? Because of my background as a, as a cook and a culinary arts major. Uh, so I sort of like wiggled in my seat a little bit and I said, I guess so, if that means I get to go. After I came back from uh, Walt Disney World, uh, I was here to help my grandmother take care of my grandfather who was ailing. Um, I found a job uh, working at the, the 99 in uh, Dartmouth, uh, which was a very busy restaurant. It was my first real opportunity, other than Disney, working in a very high-paced kitchen. From there, I got an opportunity as a suit to uh, be the sous chef at the Country Club in New Bedford. I took that opportunity, really enjoyed that. It was a little more management, a little more uh, learning how to order and do inventory and stuff like that. And from that point, I took on another opportunity where I got to purchase my own little breakfast restaurant in the North End of Bedford. It was a 48 seat place and uh, we served breakfast fare from five in the morning to two in the afternoon. Uh, and it was really just me and one waitress. And we worked our butts off and I grew the place to where I needed a, a partner on the weekends to help out in the kitchen and uh, three girls on the floor and a dishwasher. We were very busy. Worked there for three years, sort of building a reputation for myself and building a business and then saw another opportunity to sell that business, turn it over and buy a bigger place here in downtown New Bedford. And that's sort of what I ended up doing when I bought Cobblestone Restaurant. Uh, and I ran that for four years and uh, you know, it was sort of in the pocket when downtown was just starting to emerge as a place to be and not quite there with the population. Um, it was probably the year after BCC established itself down here and uh, I was just sort of, the whole place was just starting to wake up, you know? Um, and I didn't do as well as I thought I would. There were some things, you know, I made business mistakes. Let's face it, I was, you know, just pretty new to the whole running your own show type thing. My experience at Cobblestone was wonderful um, and it sort of reminded me of BCC because it was very, uh, it was very family oriented. You know, I got to know a lot of the guests. Uh, we sort of built very close ties with one another. I got an opportunity to really invest in the community by being involved in different uh, activities that happened here downtown and across the city. Uh, from there, I went to work part time as a substitute teacher at Greater Bedford Vote Tech. And that sort of is what solidified for me what would be the ideal job for Henry Bousquet. Uh, you know, uh, BCC grad and, uh, you know, just the, the, the kind of thing that is, would, would really marry my two loves, people and my passion for food and customer service. As a, as a culinary arts instructor, I'm with my students seven hours a day, uh, nearly seven hours a day, where, you know, your traditional teacher spends 30 to f 35 to 42 minutes a day with their students and they have like 350 students. I have 40 kids and I see them in uh, nine day cycles. I see 21 kids every nine days and it's the same uh, 42 kids. I pretty much get to know them better than their parents get to know them. I teach the sophomores and the first half of freshman year. So I teach like the, after the kids come out of exploratory, I teach freshmen. I just all the introductory technique and uh, very basic safety sanitation stuff and then I pick them up sophomore year again I have them for the first half of the year there and we learn a little bit more in depth some butchery and some things like that uh, and all the while I try to coax them into thinking or coax them into believing that they can do whatever they want to do uh, and you know and, and definitely you know one of the things we do is we instill in them that you know they should definitely consider higher education uh, if you know if they want to you know, further themselves and be successful. So uh, we actually have a student at BCC right now who's in the Your Culinary Arts program, uh, and I hear she's doing quite well. Uh, her name is Kayla, and she's, from what I hear, she's doing an excellent job there. So um, I can't wait to reconnect with her and see how things are going there, you know. Um, other than that, that, that's sort of how, you know, how I got to where I am and, and why I love it so much. <laughs> Here's some other news and notes from around Bristol Community College. Once again, BCC chose the month of February to celebrate its diversity through a number of programs to celebrate African American History Month. Another comprehensive slate of programs was developed for this year's African American History Month. As in the past, the traditional flag raising and march led by Native American drummers kicked off the festivities. 
The month's events combined information with celebration. One of the panel discussions focused on the importance for all Americans to take part in the 2010 U.S. Census. Entertainment included a dynamic storyteller and the annual hip-hop presentation. An African-American reading took place at all BCC campuses and centers. To the hardwoods now as the Bristol Community College men's and women's basketball teams have now completed their second intercollegiate athletic season. Building upon their first year challenges, both the women and men's basketball program saw a varying degree of improvement. Although the women's team was only able to win two games during the 2009-2010 campaign, head coach Sheila Freitas never saw her squad give up. A lot of bumps and bruises over the over time, but as you can see with BCC, they never give up. And um, that's one thing that I think with maturity and with, um, you know, just heart. They have the most unbelievable heart you'll ever see out of 10 girls in and out. And um, I think through time, they came together cohesively as a team. And that's how, you know, you see the difference and you see how passionate they are about the game. And that's what it is, is their passion to play. On the men's side, head coach Rob Delalu led his team to postseason play in only its second season, qualifying for state and regional playoff berths. Led by preseason All-American Frank Stevenson and a strong blend of sophomores and freshmen, the Bees opened up eyes within the local college basketball scene. We've had all-around play. Uh, the play that we've had, it's not one guy. It's, it's, it's really a team You know, You look at our stats. You go down the list, we got about eight guys almost averaging, you know, over, you know, seven points a game. Um, it, it's, and that's the kind of style I like to play. So it's not about one or two guys, it's about, you know, as a team as a whole. Um, but again, those sophomores are pretty much our foundation. And without them, I don't think we would have had as much success as we've had so, so early. That's all for Round BCC this month. We leave you with a look back at the Experiences, Memories, and Devices art exhibit held last month at the Grimshaw Goodowitz Art Gallery at the Fall River Campus. I'm Keith Tebow. Thanks for watching.